nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. So in this presentation, I would like to talk about open 1D systems. So they are spatial variation in one dimension. That's the topic of the next few presentations. And I want to talk about reflection and transmission over one step. All of these uh, examples here can be duplicated in a tool on uh, NanoHub. It's called the Piecewise Constant Potential Barrier Lab. So we can do that a little later. Um, what I'd like to remind you of is the time-independent Schrodinger equation, which is just a wave equation described here. And you have by ansatz, by start, a solution set of plane waves, a forward and a backward propagating wave that can solve this equation. There's a certain momentum, k, that these wave, waves propagate at. And what it's written down here is the, the wave equation for a potential that is flat. So an electron moves freely in that space, right? There's a band. The electron has an effective mass, m, and it moves freely in that space. And it can be above this energy, and it can't be below. Right? That's sort of a typical thing, particle uh, uh, calculation that you learn first quantum mechanics with. So one of the exercises that you do is to consider what, how can we compute how an electron would propagate through a system. And let's imagine we can create a step like this by some material or by some electric field or some geometry, etc. And there's a, a well-defined scattering matrix approach that allows you to treat a system, a black box system like that, where you say, well, I can have an incident wave A1 that impinges from the left onto the system, and I can have it can uh, the system can reflect some of it in the, into this reflected wave B2. You can also shoot in an electron from the right in this one-dimensional system, an incident wave A2, and a transmitted uh, uh, system or reflected B2 from the other. So in this example, what you typically do is you distinguish two cases. And say you have an energy barrier uh, of height V0, you first consider the case where you have electrons coming in from the left and the left only at an energy that is less than V0. Okay? And the second case is you consider the same type of thing, an electron coming from the left, but with an energy that is larger than V0. Okay, so let's look at the first case first. So we assume that there's an incident wave A1, a reflected wave B2, and there's an evanescent wave A2, and there's nothing coming from the right. Okay? So you can define this energy in terms of a momentum, propagating momentum, K1, and you also know that this wave is evanescent on the right-hand side here, and it has a certain decay length kappa. You can start this, or solve this problem, sorry, uh, by an ansatz where you say my wave function is made up of a component uh, on the left and of the right of this interface. And of the left of this interface, I have an impinging wave with A1 and a reflected wave B2. And they propagate at this uh, propagation constant that is depending on the energy that they come in. And you have a decaying wave that uh, decays to the right with a uh, decay constant kappa 2. So if you do all that math and you match that the wave uh, functions on the left and the right at the interface and that their derivative is constant, then you can derive a set of equations just analytically and you come up with an expression for A, B, and A and B. Now let's look at the second case. If you inject over the barrier, 
you come in with an energy that is higher than this barrier, you know now that your ansatz has to be different, where on the left hand side it still looks the same of an impinging and a reflected wave, but on the right you end up with a propagating wave now and the propagation constant is slightly altered by the offset of energy. You took away a little bit of potential energy um, and, and uh, sorry, you took away kinetic energy and stuck it into potential energy so the electron that's sitting on the right or propagating on the right has less kinetic energy and that is accounted for by this difference in K1 and K2. So they propagate at different momenta. You do the same kind of math and figure out that the wave function is matched at the interface and that the, dif that the differential is matched at the interface. You start to associate an incident and a reflected wave with a source and a transmitted wave with a transmitter. Um, you can start to compute a reflection coefficient which is just the ratio of a uh, reflected wave over incident wave and a transmission which is the transmitted wave over the uh, incident wave. You stick on uh, this in math, you can also define a probability current which is proportional to the wave and the differential of the wave in a um, Hermitian conjugate uh, type fashion. And you can identify current as being an incident current and a reflected current and a, a transmitted current that is proportional to the transmission coefficient square. So if you do all that, you can define reflection and transmission coefficients that are solely dependent on the momenta that are um, transmitting, uh, that are determined by these regions of space. Now you can look at some of the physics that is behind it. So let's say we have uh, now a barrier, a, a barrier that has three different barrier heights and this is an exercise you can do on the NanoHub with this PCPBT. You can compute a transmission coefficient and what's interesting is that in a classical particle as soon as the energy is high enough to get over the barrier it would go through, right? But you see that the transmission is not completely one at the sufficient energy there's actually some reflection coming from that. So here is the uh, ref reflection coefficient as a function of energy. So right at the barrier height there is actually still a reflection of one and that decays with energy, which is kind of surprising, right? In a, in a normal classical particle if you inject it over a barrier it just goes through. A wave in particular an electron wave is partially reflected. Right? That is something you have to consider down in this heterostructure engineering or band structure engineering part. It's not as simple as drawing stick diagrams. All right, so the key messages are that number one, electron waves can penetrate into a barrier with a certain decay length and that electron waves are not completely transmitted over the barrier and that there is a finite reflection above the barrier. Right? Those are the key concepts to take away that the math I'm sure you've seen in your basic quantum mechanics course. I want to drive home that those are the key messages to take away for devices. Okay? Are there any questions? Pretty straightforward, right? I mean, I presume you all have seen this type of math, right? Because I was going at quite a clip, because this is kind of boring stuff, because you've seen it all, right? But I just want to make sure we're on the same page.